Hello everybody. Today we are going to make um, Ferris Jetpack in Unreal Engine 4. It's pretty simple. Uh, this is all the code you have to make. Yeah, let's get started. So um, first you're gonna need a branch. Then you're also gonna need a... Don't worry about that condition. We're gonna add that later. You're gonna want do n. Um, then you're gonna want a... What do you need? A switch on int. This is a pretty simple thing. So first, you're gonna to want to make this n go to two. From there, you're gonna to want to minus one. Oops. Integer minus integer with a minus one on it. Go right there. Add in two pins. Super simple. So this is what you have so far. Input action jump. Oh, I forgot about that. You need a action jump. Um, then you're going to need branch. Um, with true false and condition being true. Do n with n being 2. A counter minus 1 into the section of switch on n with exit. So let's compile this. Nothing will happen right now, but let's do some prints. So two print screens for 1, oops, 1 and 2. Let's see this. One, two. That's it. All right. So that's what first you have to do. Next, what you want to do is um, on landed, you want to go and put this on reset. So event on landed to reset. Put that about right there. And then get your jump button, the um, default character movement one, and create that. So again, Branch to do n, minus 1, switch on int with 0 and 1, and then jump. This is also how you make double jumping, if you're wondering. Um, so now, we jump once. Not Nothing new, really. So next, we have to do our second part, which is make a new variable, which is a boolean called jetpack on. Make that number 1 and set it to true. Okay. So that's the basics of it so far. Um, just make sure I'm doing everything right. Okay, now next, on this counter, you want to make a um, double equal sign. So it's equal to integer. Make this equal to integer 2. And put this into this condition. And actually switch this to false, not true. Right? Yes, okay. And then reselect this and put this on true so you want jetpack on to be set to true both on the second jump and on jetpack on we'll put this up here we'll put this right here so the branch if um this is not reached two yet we are going to um jump and then we're going to set jetpack to be on on second jump and if you ever press space past that point before we land we're going to keep on setting a jetpack to on. Pretty simple. That is all the first, that's all space does. Next, we have the hover. I'm just going to read, read this quickly. Okay, so an event tick. It's pretty simple. Okay, we put a delay in. And this delay being about 0.01, that's what I like it to be on. Um, it makes it pretty high resolution, so to speak. Um, Actually, a better way of figuring this out is to get 1 and divide it by 60. And it's 0 0.01. Okay, good. So that's going to be 60 hertz. Um, you want to refresh every single tick so you don't get any stuttering, which is what I originally got at 0 0.2. So when this is completed, you want a branch. So event tick to a delay to a branch. This branch is an if statement, if you're wondering. Um, then you want jetpack on. You want to get that. Let's set that to uh, the true or false statement. And if it is true, you are going to want to launch the character. So just type in launch character and it'll pop up. So again, event tick to a delay to a branch to lock char launch character on true. Then you want to make a, um, a, a vector, a new vector um, variable. 
I called mine a hover, you can call it whatever you want. And you're gonna want to set the z-axis to 20. You can set it higher if you want this to be an actual like jetpack, but with Ferris jetpack it it's a really slow rise. So you want to get hover and you want to put it to the launch velocity. So compile that. And then I'll show you what happens right now. So you jump. And that's what happens. You start floating. Right? It's not exactly what you want, probably, I'm going to guess. So what you do after that is you make it go loop. You loop it into delay. So launch character goes back to delay. OK, something's wrong. Oh, yes, OK. So now if you notice, um, that has the delay, so you keep on adding back in the delay. But then if you jump again, you're going to just keep on floating. I'm not pressing space right now. This isn't supposed to happen, obviously. And you'll keep on floating and keep on gaining velocity. That's not good. So how do you fix this? Well, it's because nothing's happening when the button's released. So duplicate set jetpack on. I mean, set jetpack on. Duplicate that. Put it on released and disable it when um, the jump button is released. So now it only goes on when you um, have uh, space pressed. When you let go, it draws you back back down. Now, if you remember, we added in this if statement, right? So if it goes back to two, if this is two, then it'll just go straight to setting the jetpack on. The reason we have that is if we break that link, okay? We can hover, then if you let go and press space again, you'll just fall. So this little true false statement allows you to um, hover again. So now we have the basics of Farah's um, jump and her hover mechanics. You can add in a timer and stuff like that. Um, I recommend watching Tesla Dev's video on sprinting that will uh, talk about like sprint duration and stuff like that. It's the exact same concept, you just put it into your code. I'm not gonna do it because it adds a lot of math and a lot of time to the tutorial. So next, we have those two done. I recommend making them comments. This is a hover. And this is the space. So I'm gonna press space. Now, with left shift, because that is the button you normally press in Overwatch um, to launch yourself in the air. And this one's really basic. Um, like, super basic. All you need is a branch. And if the branch is too true, you want to launch a character. You want to launch a character about. I found that 1200 looks pretty good. So it's 1200. 1200. Um, again, so it's just left shift branch, launch character. And um, you want to make a new variable as a boolean called cooldown. Now set cooldown to false. Or keep it default on true, obviously, but set cooldown to false when you launch a character. Um, this way you can't just start spamming left shift and just fly a million feet in the air. Now obviously this will, um, this will work. So you can launch yourself in there, on the ground, but now, oh wait, what? One second. Oh yes, yes. Make sure this branch is basing itself off of cooldown. So you can only jump if your cooldown's ended. So now, jump. And now I can't press anymore. Problem is now is that you can't press it ever again. How to fix that is easy, you just add a delay. There's another way to this, which I'll show some other, or actually I'll show you right now. Um, a timer? No, a timeline. So you get a timeline. It's always more advanced. And uh, call it uh, cooldown. Cooldown uh, timeline. Okay, and then you go into this and you make a float track. And let's just call this countdown. So what this will allow you to do is uh, make like UI elements for this. So you add a keyframe and you make its value eight. Oops. Yeah. Um, go. 
and then make sure it's at time of zero. And then you make another keyframe, um, put this at zero and make it at time of eight. So eight seconds in. Um, so now if you get that, it's just a linear scale. Uh, length, make sure it's the length takes eight seconds. So you compile that, compile that. And now you go to your event graph, you have this, right? So delay, you put this in. So you click play when this is set. And then when it is finished, you want to set the cooldown to true. So it has cooldown. Now what this allows you to do is you have um, countdown. You have this variable. So you can set, let's, let's just make a string. Um, let's just print a string. So we'll make not the duration, I don't care about the duration. We'll print a string and the string will be the countdown. And let's just uh, put this over here. So what this will allow you to do, don't worry about this part, this, you don't have to actually do this part. So you have a print string. Um, now if we go in, press shift, seven, six, five, four, three, Two, so you can't press it, one, zero, press it again, it works again. Now, we want this to be play from start, actually. That way, every single time you press it, and it goes through the system, you will get this. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Shift, seven, six, that's from eight, actually. But so you have the um, cooldown, you have a visual of the cooldown. You could add that into UI and everything. I just put it into event tick with a print string. So now you just have to select all this, press C, call this shift. I like to put it as like the ability it is. Helps me um, personally. So yeah, that's the entirety of Farah's uh, jetpack. Now, if you want to add, for instance, sounds and stuff like that, you'd want to put it right here, put like an explosion sound or something. Um, the jetpack sound you'd want to put um, you'd want to put it actually up here where you set jetpack to be enabled because this restarts every 0.01 seconds. And if you want to put the jump sound, you just put it right after here. Yep. And that is the entirety of Ferris moves. So I'm going to recap quickly. Shift, space hovers, and um, if you go back to the ground, you can jump and then start hovering. And then once the cooldown ends, you can shift again. You can also use this type of timer um, in the hover area, but you're going to have to add another branch for if, um, if this cooldown has ended or not. So yeah, to recap, all you have to do is input action jump. You branch that off to a jet pack and a do n. The do n is minus by one and it's set to two. Um, and you switch on int, which is just the double jump script. You have set jet pack on for the second jump and the first jump is you jump. Then um, just make sure you can keep on pressing space. If the counter is equal to two, you do another condition. If that is true, you go into jet pack on as true. Event on landed, you reset do n. And when you release, the jetpack is false because, well, you're not holding down spacebar. Now on hover, on event tick, you delay it by 0.01 seconds. When it's completed, you check to see if the jetpack is on. And if it is on, you launch the character up by the hover mount, which I have set to 20 for a really crappy hover. Um, and then that re-loops around, so this goes back to delay. When it re-delays, it will um, just reset this whole part. And actually, it's pretty cool what it does. Then you have the shift. So for shift, you um, this is really simple. All you have to do is just when you press shift, you have a branch and if the cooldown is enabled, so if you have, um, if the cooldown is finished, you launch the character in the air at about 1200 velocity. From there, you set the cooldown to false because you just jumped, you don't want them to be able to spam it. And then you set a timeline or a delay 
um, which goes eight seconds with these two frames at eight and zero. That actually isn't needed, it's just there for uh, user interfaces. And then from there, if once that has finished, you want to play this from the start, by the way. Once that is finished, you set cooldown to true. That way you can reshift this. Yeah. Um, that is it for, uh, for Pharah. Really? Um, shift, space, and the hover and the jump. Hover and shift. Yep. Um, next, I'm probably going to do like the tracer uh, teleport, and I'll come out like next week or so. I may actually do tracer or Genji. They're both pretty basic. Um, yep. Yeah. Thank you all for watching, and uh, see you all.